If you guys remember from part one of the chassis video, um, we kind of left off, I had welded up one of the front cross members. I explained to you the CAD design of the chassis. We got to visit my laser cutters, got to watch the frame pieces being laser cut, got to see the pieces laid out, and we had pretty much left on the first chunk being welded. Uh, so in this part, what we'll do is I will go through bending up the main rails. We got the fixture I can show you and then I laid them all out in the fixture, welded them solid, metal finished them, and then finally assembled the rails to a perimeter chassis. So that's what we'll try to concentrate on this episode. Before we just skip ahead out to the shop, I'll show you this CAD model real quick since we're already in the office. So last time I had showed you the chassis and I had just overlaid this frame table behind it or underneath it rather. Um, and I was explaining that what I could do is take the rails and build fixtures between the, the chassis fixture that I have here, the frame table and my designed frame rail. So what I do is um, I decided this one was best to do on its side because of these complex curves. What I really, really needed to do was hold the dimensions between um, these different heights here. So what we came up with was this set of fixtures. So these are off to the laser cutter again. These are all laser cut. They bolt down to the big giant I-beams. You can see these ones here all bolt to the I-beams. And what this does is it's a reversible frame fixture. So I can put this frame rail in and it fits all these dimensions. All I have to do is unbolt and spin around this midsection, this front section, and this little guy here, and it will do the opposite side chassis, holding all of those same dimensions, just the mirror image of it. So very versatile. These fixtures I can do with two sets of fixtures. So this set here does the inside of the frame rail. This side does the outside of the frame rail. And then when I clamp it and weld it to here, um, I'm holding all of these dimensions exactly as I want. Super repeatable process because we do intend on making multiples of this chassis. So it is worthwhile me spending the time making fixtures for it because um, it is very repeatable now and I do intend on making multiples of these. Okay, we're gonna hop into the shop for a bit. I'm gonna show you the tool that I've made to bend up these radiuses and then we'll fit all, uh, I'm not sure how much video I took of this, but we'll fit these frame rail pieces together and then fully weld these out while they're in the fixture. And then we will end on a full chassis. Let me just highlight one more thing here. Last time I was explaining to you how bending that tube doesn't change the thickness of the material through it. So I just want to clarify that a little bit more. So if you had taken this out of a normal rectangle piece of steel and bent it, you would have again stretched the outside of this, like I explained before, and it would shrink the inside of this. As you can see here, that shrink and this stretch are compensated for in the laser cut piece. So what I do is when I bend this piece, I'm not thinning it. What I haven't done is I haven't taken a set length of that and then stretched it over this bend. I actually compensate for that in the laser cut part. So that extra material is added into that. And then when I bend it, it doesn't actually thin it to come up around that wall. I thought I'd better uh, just give a bit more clarification on that. Okay, off to the shop. Another clever thing I want to point out with uh, getting these things laser cut this piece is the inside of the rear frame rail. Uh, my laser cutter actually has an 8x20 table, so I could in fact have this rail cut out in one giant piece from a 20 foot sheet. But that, even though I could fabric or I could have it cut from a 20 foot piece, I can't fabricate something 20 feet long and put all these bends in it accurately. The piece is just way too large for me to handle. So, what I do is I chop these down into four pieces with uh, heavily staggered joints and then the pieces become manageable and I can make a rear frame rail and a front frame rail and then the two of them kind of plug together um, while I tack them and then I fully weld them out as a fully assembled frame rail. Uh, it's just easier for me to bend after the fact just because I can't handle that in one giant piece. So another clever thing I want to point out is that when I have this laser cut, you can see these little lineup tabs. Um, that's one of my cross members that I was telling you about before, locate tabs. 
but I also have these etched lines in it. So wherever I have to bend these, I get the laser cutter to etch in bend lines. So this particular piece has four bends along it. So I've got eight lines etched, in, etched into it. This is the start of my bend and the end of my bend. And in that, I know that I have a four inch radius bend and it needs to go between these two lines. The program tells me what the bend angle should be. In this particular case, it's 50 degrees. And calculated into the length of this, the K factor of that would give me a 50 degree bend. So I always set it up with an angle finder anyhow, but I know where I need to start the bend, I know where I need to stop the bend. And then that will accurately line up on the second piece that I put in top and bottom for the bend that follows that. So pretty cool. It, uh, it saves a ton of time laying this out after the fact, plus it's bang on accurate. It's super duper accurate. So I'm going to show you um, my radius bender for these. This is something that uh, I've gone through probably three different iterations in the shop, but this one seems to work really well. So I'll show you what I got going on. So this is my custom radius bender. So what I have is um, on the side of my workbench, I just made this big cleat. So this is just a machine dovetail, bolts to the side of my workbench. And then I get these, again, laser cut. This is quarter inch plate. I get these die sets laser cut, uh, again, with a dovetail. So they're interchangeable. Dovetail just slides into there. This particular one is a four inch radius. So what I do is I will set my piece that I'm going to bend up on here and uh, I'll show you how that bend goes. One of the key things about the accuracy of the bend is you need this frame rail to not move when I'm bending it. So I use this big chunk of plate, again, bolted to the workbench. Instead of putting a bunch of clamps along it, this holds it perfectly square to my die set. So when I do bend it, this holds it solid and then I'm bending here without, without moving the frame rail and uh, causing my bend to move. Okay, so my die sets, the way that I made these with um, individual die plates is I can change the width of this. So if I have some of these rails that I bend have a really big swooping radius to them. So I have to space my die set so that as I'm bending it this direction, it always is in contact with a die. So it bends it really straight and accurately. So I can space these to wherever um, I know I'm going to hit on here. So I, then I have a roller piece that fits onto this. So this roller fits through all these dies. And is completely adjustable. So as I change the set of dies in here, obviously my pivot point changes, and then my roller is adjustable to wherever, whatever that radius of bend is. So we make sure this is square to our die. Clamp this down. So we're bending square and straight and this doesn't pull out at all. Now, uh, remember what I said was we start on our etch line here. So I've got my etch line to the start of my radius in my die. And I know this is this etch line is where my radius ends, where my bend ends. But still what I do is I put my digital protractor on here. So I know I'm looking for 50 degrees of bend. So I just uh, simply bend this and watch my protractor. To 50. As slick as that.
Okay, so this is what we're left with, perimeter chassis. This is pretty much up to the CAD model that uh, I showed you guys earlier. Now, I know I did get a little bit ahead and I forgot to film kind of welding this together, but as it showed in the CAD model, this rear cross member did tab in place. So this locates itself, same with the body mount. So I got all four of these body mounts located itself. They, uh, they tab into place, so there's no real setup there. All that I had to do was level and parallel the frame table and then because these locate themselves basically all I had to do was make sure the frame was square and level and parallel and then uh, locate the front cross member. I got the two of those welded in so we pretty much have a perimeter chassis right now. I got straps holding the dimensions for the front and rear. I do have cross members going in front and rear as well um, that are just uh, like to hold the rat saddle in the front for example. Um, but the most important thing is that um, the frame is identical side to side, it's square, it's parallel, it's level, and a uh, perfect foundation to work off. Now you will notice, of course, if you pay attention to the cabinet models, I got this big giant hole in the middle of the frame. Typically you would have, you know, motor mounted up there, transmission with a couple of cross members in here. Um, well, obviously this is the space for our battery. So. That's what we're gonna tackle next. I've got all my aluminum already lasered for my battery box. So we're gonna jump ahead and we're gonna start bending some aluminum panels for the outside perimeter of the, of the battery box itself. Then I've got some CNC parts that need to weld into the inside of it. But I think I'm gonna save that for the next video. The next video will kind of concentrate on building out this battery box and, uh, and yeah, kind of everything that goes into that. So I hope you uh, like what you see so far. It's pretty cool. I'm very happy with how it's turning out. Um, dimensions are exactly what the CAD model is. So yeah, very happy how it's turning out. Really like the styling of it too. It's pretty cool. So can't wait to get the body back here and get her mounted on. All right, thanks a lot guys.